Welcome back to Blender Daily. Today I want to show you a cool scatter add-on that is already pre-installed with Blender. Let's get started. Okay, so I prepared this simple scene and I have a few mushrooms that I got from Quixel and our goal now is to scatter them onto this ground plane. So in order to access the scatter tool, we first need to enable it in the user preferences. So just go up to edit, open the preferences and in the add-ons panel, just search for scatter objects and tick this little checkbox next to it in order to enable it. So now to start scattering, let's first select all the mushrooms and then shift click onto the ground plane. Make sure that the ground plane is the active selection and you can see this by this yellow outline and all the rest of the selection has this orange outline and the active selection has a yellow one. So once that's ready, go up to object and choose scatter objects. Now we can start drawing onto our ground plane and you can see that all those blue cubes are, uh, are spawned. Those cubes are just placeholders for the instances that are gonna be created later on. Just draw wherever you want to have mushrooms so let's say we want to have more mushrooms right here than in the rest of the plane. Just add more strokes and it will add more instances. And once you're happy with your drawing, we can go to the workspace settings and here we have a few more options for the scatter add-on. So first of all, we can adjust the density and add either more or less instances. And you can always see the number of instances that we have down in this bottom left corner. So I think I'll bring this down a bit. And around 120 instances should be right in this, in this case. And we can also adjust the radius. So basically this defines how far away from the lines that we created those instances should be. So if I bring this radius to zero, all the mushrooms will be spawned directly on the lines that we drew. But in this case, I'll bring this up a bit. Let's say around 0.8 meters. And we can also adjust the scale. So I think I'll make them a bit bigger. And we can also give the scale a bit of randomness. So if I bring this randomness to zero, all the objects have exactly the same size. But if I bring this up, we get a bit of randomness. And I think I'll bring this to around 50%, just to have a bit of randomness in here to make it look more natural. We can also give it random rotations. And I think I'll just add a slight, slight rotation around 10 degrees. That should be enough. You could also give it an offset. So if you don't want to place the object directly onto the plane, you could either increase this value to place them above the plane or decrease this value to bring them down. But in this case, I want to have them just on the plane. So I leave this value at zero. So those are basically the settings that we have. We can also play with the seed to get different variations of it. Just click through it until you have a result that you like. And yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this one. So once you're happy with it, just press enter on your keyboard and it will turn those blue cubes into mushrooms. Now be aware that this is a destructive process. So we can't go in later on and adjust those settings because they are now baked in. If you want to scatter objects and be able to adjust them later on, I recommend you to use a particle system instead or go with geometry nodes that were implemented into Blender in the version 2.92. Okay, so now we have them scattered, but you can see that it also scattered those white triangles. We don't want them. However, they are not a big issue because they won't show up in the final render anyways. But if they, if you don't like them and want to get rid of them in the viewport as well, you can just select them, select those triangles, go to the object properties and in the instancing menu, Turn off show instances instancer for the viewport. 
And now in order to do this for all our objects, just select them in the scatter collection that they created for us. Select all of them. And if I now turn it off, you can see that it still only affects the active selection. But if I want to turn off all of them, just hold down Alt while I deselect this and it will do it for all the selected objects. Okay, so this already looks way better. However, we still have another issue, which is that it copied all of our uh, objects that we scattered and placed them onto the world origin. Again, this is not a big issue because they won't show up in the final render anyways, but uh, we can't select them and just move them away with G because then all the instances will follow along. And we also can take the plane and move it away because the instances won't follow. So what we can do is just select all of them and press H to hide them so we don't see them in the viewport anymore. Okay, so that's basically it for our scatter tool. And all those, um, all those scattered mushrooms are linked instances to our original object. So if I were to select this and I want to make changes on this mushroom, I can just tap into edit mode and you can see if I make any changes on here, for example, make it a bit higher, you can see that it also updates all our instances immediately. And because they are linked, they also don't use a lot of memory. So your viewport, per viewport performance and the rendering should still be pretty fast, even if you've scattered a lot of objects. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I am Nick from Blender Daily. See you in the next one.